the last video we left off here with our measuring points in these locations for to measure inclines and we did this we turned this sideways and this is just like a two-point perspective diagram so inclines in one point perspective are simply two-point perspective diagram turned sideways so if we, the only real difference here between two-point perspective and and this diagram is that in two-point perspective we put we were doing this for our measuring points we've been putting them on the horizon line so that the vanishing points and the measuring points were all along the same line so I mean, that needs to happen. The vanishing points and the measuring point should be on the same line. I can't just like pick out a random line to put a measuring point on. So the, the this one doesn't do that, though. So they're down here. This, that's weird. So we could have done this, though, if you take a look at it this way. And if we took this, this distance and instead of swinging it up we swung it down here like this and put it on a vertical line you can do that see they're still on the same line now they're on the same line between you know, as the vanishing points and the measuring point that belongs to it are on the same line it's just a vertical line so that is all fine But the problem with this, putting them here, is when we set this diagram up, see our, our measuring line? We made it parallel to the horizon line, which that's what you usually do. You made, it's setting on the ground and it's parallel, it's going, going right along the ground plane. So that's why we put these up here. That's why we put them on a horizontal line. We even called it an auxiliary horizon line because it acts kind of like this horizon line. This is just like a placeholder for these vanishing points and measuring points. And if we wanted to use this measuring line, we have to put these on a horizontal line. If we put them on this line, this vertical line, we need to take our measuring line and rotate it 90 degrees so it's vertical, so it's parallel with this line. This idea really comes into play a lot in three-point perspective. So let's take this line, this measuring line, and we're just we're going to turn it vertically. So we want Let's see, if we're measuring this line that goes to this vanishing point up here, then this is the measuring point that belongs to that. And here is our measuring line. Well, it's a vertical measuring line. So we are going to take this 10. I think I'll just use a compass to transfer this distance to a vertical line. So there is 10. And if we go to 10 and to this measuring point, look magic. You get the same answer. I don't even know how you could possibly measure this distance with this measuring point with this horizontal line. I mean, I just don't see it just wouldn't work. So let's try this one. This is six. Change colors. And let's transfer this six. to this vertical line. You could do it with a compass. You could do it with a, a 45 degree triangle. You could just measure it with your ruler and turn your ruler vertically. So here's a six. 
and this is my measuring point for, for this vanishing point down here. So I go from this measuring point through six. And magic again, magic. You get the exact same result. See, now this one, I could, I could give it an attempt to measure with this ruler because it will actually, I could count over six and go to this measuring point and you can see it's not quite, it gives me a different answer. It's close, but if this was like 12, then it'd be a much farther off. So it's, there, there would be a point where you could get the same answer <laughs> But they like a, this would have to be um, you know, a little, the, I, I think, slightly more than six. If each one of, if this was like 6.25 and this was 6.25, you could find a spot that they would be lined up with each other. But that's just a uh, you know, coincidence when that happens that you get the same result. But any other place they're not going to line up and give you the same result. So let's look in um, two-point perspective. So we did this. I kind of cleaned these up from the last video. We took the distance between the vanishing point and this measuring point, and we swung it up to the horizontal line. But we could just as easily maybe even more e e easier would be to s put it on this vertical line. To put it right there. But now, um, let's see. We want this horizontal measuring line. Now it has to be vertical. And we have to take this distance. and put it there. One, two, three, four, five, six, so this is six. Then if I go from six to my new measuring point, more magic. It's exactly the same spot. So that, um, so, so you, that's how you can work this if you put your, your measuring points on a vertical line as opposed to a horizontal line. You just have to make sure your ruler, your measuring line is parallel with the line that the vanishing point is on. So like why? Why would you even do such a thing? Like, you, like in this case, like either one works. So you don't want to do both. I mean, I guess you could do both to check out your work and see if you get the same answer using both. But there is a reason you would want to put it on this vertical one. And that reason is if you have a vanishing point, one of these auxiliary vanishing points, if it's really far away, then that's where this really comes in, comes in handy to have it on a vertical line. So that's um, coming up next.